Okay, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create the synthetic layer uh, that I showed in the previous tutorial of the snare layering. Okay, so let's begin. The This snare, this layer, is consisting three layers, uh, a click layer, a body, and the actual snares, and the tail. Um, all of these, all of these three are operator and I'll show you uh, how they sound without the process chain. Whoops. Okay. This is how they sound. So we got the click, the body, and the snares. And let's start by explaining how they're made. Okay, so, so <clears throat> the click is being made using uh, one oscillator sine wave with a very short decay of around 100 milliseconds on the amplitude. But what actually makes the knock <coughs> is the pitch envelope. Now the pitch envelope here, as you can see, is a bit strange. It's not your common ADSR. Um, and this is because it has the Ableton Live's envelopes has a... Uh, they, they have a... Um, a few interesting uh, options uh, because you can tr you can control the initial value and the peak value. So the initial value is all the way is almost all the way up, which means it starts at forty six. Um, in this case, it starts in uh, in forty six semitones semitones up, and uh, after uh, around a millisecond point nineteen, it drops to thirty one semitones. Um, then from there it goes to zero, which is the actual note that we're playing, in around almost 50 milliseconds. And this is what actually, this is actually making the the, uh, the click, as you can hear. I'll just put it back, yeah. Okay, here on the filter I'm using the, this is the actual this is the old version of operator, so I'm using here the high ladder. Um, I'm actually cutting uh, everything under 168 or 9. I cannot see. I can't see <laughs> till there. Uh, with uh, with not a lot of resonance, but enough. Uh, no envelopes are being used here, and yeah, but I'm using the sign shaper with. Uh, a negative value of 2.81 dBs and just barely just a bit of uh, wet and yeah this is what I'm using for the click let's go buddy okay so the buddy is again is only one oscillator and I'm not using any FM so uh, yeah this this is why I'm calling it oscillators and not operators um, I'm using the triangle uh, wave waveform and uh, here I actually changed the initial um, the initial value to 0 dBs, so it won't start at infinite and then go up, it just starts from the top. But then with a quick decay of around 200 and almost 70 milliseconds, it just drops very quickly. Then we got the pitch envelope as well, uh, but here it just uh, 6 semitones above our note, with around almost 90 uh, milliseconds of mellow drop and now the filter does a lot uh, this is the low 24 dB uh, and I'm cutting anything um, from around 170 Hertz downwards with a bit of resonance kind of to accentuate this area I'm also using the sign shaper but barely just uh, I mean the the wet amount is fairly high not entirely wet but the actual drive is not is a uh, is at a negative 10 dBs so it just kind of adds a bit to the character um yeah this is it for the body now we'll go to the noise as you can hear this is the snares and the tail are pure white noise uh again only one oscillator the white noise and as you can see here, I kind of played with the attack of it, so it won't come exactly when the knock is uh, is hitting. Uh, it kind of comes afterwards, like uh, trying to simulate an actual acoustic snare. The it's like the tail of it. 
So around um, around 60 milliseconds up, and then it decays at around 600. But then I kind of left a bit of release to it because, if for example, I'm hitting a a note quickly, um, I want the actual tail to to be to still be there and not just vanish uh, immediately. Okay. Um, I'm using here the filter, I'm using the high ladder as well, and I'm cutting everything from around 640 hertz uh, with barely with, with barely any uh, resonance with it. But I'm using here the envelope, a very short envelope, around 62 milliseconds, but it is barely audible. This is the difference. You can barely hear it, but uh, I just left it for a reason. I guess I have no clue why. So all of these together. Now we can start uh, discussing these. And I'll just refresh your memory because uh, I think I discussed that when I was uh, doing the previous tutorial. So I'll just make it even quicker. Okay. So the first thing I'm using is Isotope Alloy 2. I'm using, I'm beginning with the equalizer, just uh, uh, kind of attenuating the low end with a low shelf and attenuating the high presence with high shelf. Just tiny cuts like minus 1.6 dBs here, minus 2.8, I think, dBs there. Uh, but here, I'm, ex I'm actually... Um, boosting around the fundamental of the of the snare and around the click of it. Uh, okay, next thing, transient, transient shaper, transient designer, however you want to call it. I'm just taking the attack and increasing it a bit to make it a bit punchier and taking the sustain and just lowering it down because b without it, yeah, it kind of makes the entire uh, snare sound punchier and I like it okay dynamics this first uh, compressor here I'm using it as a compressor it is a heavy compression as you can see here this is around 20 dBs of, of gain reduction I think in the previous tutorial I was kind of tweaking it uh, uh, just to fit better with the other two layers so it was kind of less uh, compression but uh, just in in general this is how I made this specific sound. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like really compressing compressing everything very quickly and not uh, like leaving any room for the transient to pop, th to pop through. Um, then I'm using the second dynamics as a limiter. As you can see here, uh, this is a 30 to 1 ratio and with a just a 0 0.7, minus 0 0.7 of the uh, threshold, so just kind of trying to limit the the some sort of clipping. So uh, yeah, uh, and afterwards, I'm using the actual limiter module, but this is more for just overall loudness. Sort of, uh, I'm kind of I don't know. I'm just using it for for increasing the overall loudness. Yeah. Okay. Next, we got this. This is the Pro Q2. Uh, I just really like, I, I just love its work, its its entire workflow and how it sounds, so I just kind of chose this one. Um, kind of uh, decreasing this area, the harshness, I, I found the noise to be a bit too harsh. Uh, kind of uh, cutting a bit uh, the fundamental of the sound just to maybe because, well, it is very aggressive. And I have also cut everything under um, 100 hertz here. Um, yeah. Next one would be the overdrive. As you can instantly hear, it just changes the entire sound. And in a very pleasing way distorting but pleasing uh, okay so the overdrive here is a full spectrum overdrive I'm not driving it a lot but but enough 
and uh, and the tone is kind of set towards the higher frequency content, as you can hear. Um, the dry wet is almost entirely uh, wet and no dynamics applied. Next one, we got the multi bands dynamic, multi band dynamics, sorry. And I'm using it in more of like a, a downwards expansion, upwards expansion sort of uh, way. Uh, of course, with peak detection and uh, hard knee. And I'm only using one. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I'm only using one band, which is kind of full spectrum here because I kind of disabled the lower and the higher. Okay. Um, basically what the concept here is that anything under this threshold will be attenuated and any, and everything above this uh, this threshold will be increased um it kind of makes it more of like a transient shaper if, if you would have, if you would like to emulate a transient shaper using uh live stock devices so yeah i guess this is one way of doing it all right, last thing would be the saturator. The thing, I mean, I mean, I think I used it for mainly for the soft clipping option because as you can see here, this is already clipping very, very quite heavily. And so the soft clipping is kind of limiting it with a mild distortion, which is very pleasing again a, a pleasing distortion go figure um but as well i'm using the soft sign here and just kind of lowering the drive of it i have no clue why i left the dc offset knob on it kind of sounded probably better because i don't have any dc issues here as long as as, as much as i know i mean yeah, it all seems to go back to zero. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is it pretty much. This is how you create this sound. And, um, well, a few things I would just like to explain are the the use of these plugins. Um, as much as I love them, and I really do, they're not mandatory. They're not like must-have plugins in order to achieve these these sort of sounds it has nothing to do with it um, I wouldn't lie that these plugins both of them and like many other uh, products from these two companies and many others uh, sound they sound fantastic and they are very easy and like the workflow with the pro Q is just incredible and the versatility of the alloy 2 is insane but uh if you don't have them, well, it's it's not like the end of the world. I mean, you can make such sounds using um, your own DAW stuff. I mean, I could have probably used the the EQ8 from uh, from the Ableton one, and here in this module, I could have probably came up, come up with a few things using probably compressors here, the limiter here, the transient I might have had. I might could I could have used the multiband dynamics like I've, like I explained here again equalizer. Um, uh, I got I got a few questions on like uh, do I need it? Do I have to have it or and stuff like that? And I said, well, you don't have to have it, but these these plugins are incredible. If you can afford them, go and buy them because well, all of the things I'm using are are actually le uh, uh, like legal uh, stuff that I've actually bought but uh, um, if you can't afford it or, or whatever it's okay your DW is equipped with top-notch um, uh, plugins and devices and whatever so just you don't have to feel obligated to get them the, you you I would definitely suggest that because they're incredible, but um, you don't have to. As I explained, the, 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 the key thing I was trying to, to explain is is the concept of how you do those things so you can just kind of convert it to your uh, platform, to your environment. Um, so hopefully I managed to do that 
and if I haven't and and you got any question questions um feel free to write them down in the comments send me a direct message I'll be happy to answer and uh that is it pretty much uh hope you find it useful thank you and uh have a nice day